All right, looking at physical development. So it's really interesting. Um, I'm on slide five here, early 20s, peak of physical functioning. So <laughs> we are in our peak. I just read the title to you. Um, when we're looking at our physical stamina, uh, stamina, uh, it peaks out in our 20s, but there's so many other things that peak out, right? Our cardiac output, our reaction times, our, sh our um, uh, strength of our grip, our, even our bone density are all at our peaks. Um, we're really not very susceptible to much illness in our 20s. Now I'm talking about er emerging adults here. Um, it's going to change when we start to talk about young adults. Um, so we're really, really fit, healthy, not getting very ill. Um, but we do see when people are, um, it tends to look at, it's more about lifestyle um, factors. So we can see some lifestyle factors undermine health, like not eating proper, um, getting in enough nutrition, so vitamins, minerals, all that good stuff, not sleeping properly, which we'll talk about in a moment, and then like handling stress and having a high stress life. These we will see impact physical health, um, but overall we're hitting our peaks in our emerging adulthood. So I mentioned sleep. Let's go to the next slide about sleep patterns and deficits. Um, specifically, when we're talking about emerging adulthood and, and the younger end of that, talking about college students in particular, there's a lot of studies looking at um, sleep deficits and sleep patterns of young people. And we do see, unfortunately, almost 50% of people in emerging adulthood report some sort of sleep problem. Um, so we see things like this delayed sleep phase syndrome, which is the whole sleeping really long in on the weekends, right? And then just getting up super early during the week leads to sort of this excessive sleepiness during the work week or the school week. And we do see about 10% of people in emerging adulthood say they have major sleep problems. Um, and so one of the questions I threw on your, um, threw out there and I wanted to answer for you um, was, okay, so how do we help people with sleep hygiene? Because we know sleep is so important for physical health during this time of life. And we know that for almost half of them, there's a problem. Um, so we look at things like setting up, here are my sleep hygiene strategies, setting up um, the same sort of wake and sleep time if you can, scheduling, um, seeing about movement, right? Like, exercise even if it's whatever your favorite exercise is doing that every day remember 60 minutes is what's recommended to us um so even if it's just walking around like you walk to the bus or whatever so are you exercising uh are you napping you shouldn't if you have sleep problems should not be taking naps especially in the afternoon um also i would look at caffeine and alcohol intake like no caffeine um if we have sleep problems um Excessive alcohol, also alcohol in general, really impacts sleep. Um, so these are things that I would look at and suggestions I would make to my friend. All right, let's move to slide seven about aging. Oh, we go from emerging adult to young adult, and I say emerging adult, we're peaking, we're doing so good physically, and then young adulthood aging begins. All right, so physical functioning remains really high. Um, for the ordinary people, we're really good in this age, in this age time. We do see a little bit of decline in some changing and aging beginning though in our 30s. So now we're talking about young adults. Changes in aging. So things like um, we start to see the appearance of gray hair in young adults. We see receding hairlines and thinning hair. We see changes in our skin, it becomes looser, more wrinkles are starting to appear. Cholesterol fat might start to accumulate more. We actually see immune system changes in um, some of the different cells and the number of cells we have. Um, we also see it, it takes a little bit longer starting, if you compare like a 35 year old in the same injury to a 25 year old, um, longer recovery times as we age. So interestingly enough, between these two age spans, we hit our peak and then we start to see the decline happening. Um, last thing I want to talk about physical development during this really big span here is, um, risky behavior reaches its, uh, sorry, reaches its risky, it reaches its peak pre prevalence, um, in emerging adulthood, young adults, not as much. Um, so for emerging adults, remember we're talking about that 18, 19, 20 to 25 kind of age. Um, we see car fatalities are the highest during this time, right? So we know young people are inexperienced drivers. We talked about that risky behavior stuff of what they're doing, um, higher rates of driving under the influence. Um, so fatalities, car accidents are sort of the biggest threat to life, um, in emerging adulthood, biggest threat to life and health. Um, so of course we want, you know, to reduce that. So we look at parental involvement when they're younger. Um, we look at monitoring of cars. We're looking at graduated driver's license. So we see that since um, autom automobile accidents are the major threat to life, we are trying to reduce that. Um, the graph shows rates of car fatalities by age, as you can see here. 
So there's quite a big peak there in emerging 21 to 24, particularly for males. All right, so we're gonna stop here. It's a short one on physical health, and then we're gonna pick back up on cognitive development. Continue to follow the workbook, and I'll see you in a moment.